Good morning, good morning. Good morning, all of you. Good morning, good morning. Come on in the room, come in the room. Come on in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. That's right. Come on in the room. The Lord is great. He is greatly to be praised, greatly to be honored and adored. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. This is July 4th. It's the 4th of July. Good morning to all of you. That's right. Come on in the room. It is time for us to give the Lord our first and our best praise. Time for us to magnify the Lord for he is great and powerful and mighty and awesome. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There is no word that I can say to describe how powerful and awesome the Lord is. And amazing. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. Come in the room. Come in the room. Let us magnify him. Let us bless this Lord. Let's bless him today. Come on in the room. Let me know that you are here, that you plan to be a participator in the word of God, not just a spectator this morning. Good morning to all of you. I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to get right into what the Lord has for us on this morning. Father God, we just bless your name. We praise you, O oh God, for who you are, Lord God, for you are strong and mighty, O oh God. Lord God, you continue to bless us, O oh God, on every hand. You continue to bless the people of God, Lord, wherever they are, Lord God. But we thank you, Lord God, that you heal us, oh God. Yes, you yes, you receive us, God, into the kingdom of God, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, yes, for blessing us, God, even last night as we laid down, Lord God, to slumber and to sleep, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that you bless us, oh God, to wake us up this morning. And when you woke us up, oh God, God, we had you on our minds, oh God, because we know, God, that you are the one that allows us to have a good rest, oh God. You are the one, God, that even though we may have wrestled with the enemy on last night, Lord God, God, we know that we came out victorious, oh God. And Lord God, even though there were situations that were plaguing us, oh God, we know, Lord God, that you're going to bring us out on top. But we recognize that there is no weapon that is formed against us, oh God, that is going to prosper against the people of God. And Lord God, we thank you that even now, God, that God, you can do all things. Oh, Lord, that you are an unstoppable God. Yes, God, we thank you, Lord God, that even for the peace that you give us now that surpasses all understanding, that guards our heart and our minds in Christ Jesus, oh God. We thank you for the peace you give us, God, now, even the midst, God, of a troubling world, God, and confusion, God, that is going on in the world, oh, God. We thank you, Lord God, right now for how you're blessing us, and Lord God, for how you're healing us, oh, God. We thank you, Lord God, yes, for letting us know, God, that no matter what the enemy tries to do, that it will not work. He will not disturb our peace. He will not disturb our joy. He will not disturb, my God, the things that are happening in our lives, oh, Lord God, but we recognize that you know the plans that you have for us, oh, God. God, and they are not plans to destroy us, oh God, but they are plans to bring us hope, plans to bring us future, oh God, plans to bring us to the expected end, oh God, where we're going to be victorious in all things, God, not just today, Lord God, but God, in times to come. We thank you, Lord God, that even, God, we pray, God, yes, for our seed, oh God, that we thank you, Lord God, even as the word reminds us, God, that as we are righteous and we walk in your righteousness, oh God, the Bible says that our seed, our children, that the righteousness, God, the seed of the righteous shall be delivered, delivered from all harm, delivered, Lord God, from the things that the enemy tries to put in their path, delivered, God, from generational curses, shall be delivered, my God, from sin, from sickness, from poverty, from an early spiritual death. We thank you for deliverance now in the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, we give this time over to you, Lord God, that you may take it, Lord God, you may do with it what you want, that you, God, yes, make hold the people of God, yes, accountable for the word that is given to them in their spirits and in their hearts hearts in their hearing, oh God. Then God, let them do, God, what is contained in the word of God, that they may hear it, God, and be good stewards over the word, Lord God. They will not keep it, but they may share it, oh God. Yes, God, they may obey the word of God, that they may become, God, uh, uh, better, God, carriers of the word, better ambassadors for you in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that this word will not return void, but it will accomplish what it has been sent to do in the mighty name of Jesus. We do pray, amen, and we bless the Lord. Good morning to all of you, Sister Latanja. Good morning to you. God bless you, Sister Deborah, Cousin Jean. Good morning to you, Cousin Fran. Good morning, Latanja. Good morning to you. God bless you, Sister Gloria, Sister Nancy. Good morning to all of you that are joining this morning meditation. It's been a minute that I've seen you. Yes, I've been out of town, and glory to God, I've been on a, uh, a trip. Yes, in a conference. 
And I'm telling you, in the conference, good morning to you, in the conference that I was in, the Lord was really speaking a lot in regard to what it is that, good morning to you, Sister Terry, what it is that um, we should know, good morning to you, Sister Trina, what it is that we should know and do. And, and as he was speaking, he was speaking about what's one of the things that happened while I was away and while I was out at the conference and um, out in Maryland um, over the past week, um, he was uh, speaking to me about leadership and leadership transition. And sometimes we don't like um, for things to change, particularly when it comes to leadership, those that may be over us. And I'm telling you, what. and initially as I was thinking about this particular meditation, I was thinking about glory to God, how we were all born into sin and how all of us, people of God, we were all born. And when we were born into sin, we were born under the leadership of the enemy. Yeah. And we were born under the leadership of the enemy. That means we were doing what the enemy wanted us to do. We were, we were walking the way he wanted us to walk. We were talking the way the enemy wanted us to talk. But then, oh my God, the Bible says, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, new things come. Glory to God. And we think about the newness that's coming in our life, the new thing that comes in our life. Listen, leadership transition was what I'm talking about here this morning. Leadership transition. When we come from a point in time in our life where we're no longer being led astray, the Bible talks about when we are, when we are in sin, we are a slave to sin. But when we become sons of God, we become slaves to the Lord Jesus Christ. When we are no longer being led by the enemy, we are no longer being led into destruction. We're no longer being led into a place, my God, where there's going to be total and, and utter, my God, I'm talking about damnation to our souls. We are no longer being led to a place where we are causing harm and pain to ourselves and are causing harm and pain to other people. We are no longer being led to a place, glory to God, where we're going to be defeated on every hand. Listen, when we become a part of the kingdom of God, a part of the body of Christ, now being led, glory to God, by the Lord himself under new leadership. Come on in here, somebody. We got to say we are now under new leadership. Good morning to you, Sister Marilyn. We are now under new leadership. And that new leadership that we are now under is a leadership that's going to cause, glory to God, victory in our lives. That new leadership, I'm talking about the leadership of Jesus Christ. When you give your life to the Lord, I'm telling you this morning, that's new leadership is going to lead you into a path of total victory. It's going to lead you to a path of total health and wealth and prosperity in the Holy Ghost. It's going to lead you to a place, glory to God, where you're no longer the tail, but you are the head. You are no longer beneath, but you are above. It's going to lead you to a place, glory to God, where you have a good reputation, a good rapport among those whom you walk with. It's going to lead you to a place where you understand that you can speak a thing and it shall come to pass. Speak that thing. The Bible says you can speak it as as those things into existence speaking my God as though they are not as they are as though they are not come on in here somebody you can speak those things glory to God the Bible says you can all oh, speak to the mountain it can move from here to there if you believe in the one who is, has you under new leadership glory to God I'm talking about leadership changing of the guards and as I was glory to God out in Maryland we went into our, in my organization from the 17th national president of the Lynx Incorporated to the 18th National President. And it was a process. It was a process of transition. It was a process of change. And sometimes, people of God, we don't like change. We don't like transition simply because we don't know or we don't understand or we are uncertain as to what it is that's going to happen with the new leadership that's in charge. Glory to God. We don't know. So we may not, you know, it could be as, as simple, something as simple as a transition with somebody that maybe you work for a, a company. You may work for your own self, but maybe you work for a company. Glory to God. And then the boss changes and, and you don't know uh, what's going to happen with the new leadership, with the new boss. And my God, maybe you think that the new boss may even let you go. Or maybe you think he's going to have some new rules that you're not going to too much be uh, excited about. Maybe there's going to be some new processes that you're maybe not going to want to go go along with. And you just don't know there's some uncertainty. So you have some anxiety. Glory to God about the new leadership. 
leadership. You, you have some anxiety, but I want you to know this morning that when there is a transition, when God, come on, has a transition on the horizon, when there is something that God wants to do, glory to God, that shows you that there is time, go glory to God, that there is time for a transition. I want you to know, God, this morning that God is going to prepare you for that transition. God is going to prepare you, glory to God, for the time that it's time for you to move off of where you are into the time that it's when you move into the situation that he has you moving into. And so I got a scripture in the word of God for you. Glory to God. It is found, my God, yes, in Samuel. Yes, I want to look today or this morning in 1 Samuel. I'm going to look at 1 Samuel. I'm going to look at uh, chapter 16. I'm going to look at verse number 1, but I want you to go all the way from 1 to 23 as you're looking and me reading and meditating on the Word of God this morning. And I want you to think about leadership transition. Sometimes, glory to God, the transition may happen on your job or sometimes it may happen in your school. Maybe it's with a teacher. Glory to God. Your leadership transition, glory to God, it can happen in any situation, any time in your life. And, and, and think about the anxiety that you have glory to God but I want you to know when my God when when the Lord transitions you when he moves you when he, he wants you to know that there's somebody else glory to God that's higher than the one that you were with before somebody else glory to God that has more power somebody else my God that's able to take you to the next level or the next place glory to God in your life you got to recognize that God's got you he's got it all under control and then uh, and this is what he says to us he says to us it's time to go it's time to move when he says, I got somebody else in place. First Samuel, I'm going to look at it, chapter 16. Verse number one simply says this. Now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Mm -hmm. Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. He said, fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice the Lord. And then to the Lord and then invite Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show you what you shall do and shall anoint for me the one I name to you. This morning, I want you to know that the Lord, listen, is preparing somebody for leadership. And when the Lord prepares somebody for leadership, I hear he's saying to Samuel, you got to be ready. You got to be ready. He said, fill your horn and go. He said, listen, I've told you already. And the one who is in power now is not the one who should be in power. Listen, when we, when we have, um, um, when we don't have the right one in our life and who is the, who is not the right one, when we have the enemy that is ruling us, when we have the enemy that is over us. I want you to know this morning, people of God, that's not the right one. The Lord is saying, listen, I've already told you. I've already told you that that's not the right one. That I've already told you that I've got somebody else, yes, that should be ruling over you. I've already told you, my God, that John 10, 10 said the enemy came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So, but you didn't believe me. You didn't listen you allowed him to come into your life. You allowed him to come and to wreak havoc in your life. He says, but listen, I sent Jesus to come that he would give you life and, and give you life more abundantly. I sent him to come. Yes, that we could rule and reign over your life, that your life could be much better than it has been in the past. He says, he said to Samuel, he said, don't waste time mourning over the former things that have happened. Don't waste time mourning over the failures that you had. He said, don't waste time mourning over what could have been with what was in your life. He says, I, because I've given you something else. I've given you something brand new. I've given you something better. Oh, people of God, sometimes we mourn over the old things. We mourn over the things with, that we thought were leading us to a place. Oh, Elder preached a message yesterday. Yeah, that a man plans his way, but God orders his steps. We mourn over the things that we plan in our lives. And we mourn over the things, glory to God, that we think, my, yes, that, God, that, that we ought to have in our lives. But God has a better 
better plan for us. He has a better way for us. And the better way for us is to understand that God's timing is the timing that we ought to be functioning on, that we ought to be working on. So that we can't be thinking about the old things, the, the old situations, the old people that we used to hang out with. Thinking about the old, yeah, the old things that we used to do. Sometimes, people of God, we reminisce about things. And we reminisce about those things, glory to God, that were in our old life, in our old space when we were under old leadership. We reminisce about the times, yeah, when we used to go out to the clubs and drink and we used to get drunk. We, we reminisce about the time we had those old friends, glory to God, that were leading us astray. We reminisce about those old things, glory to God, when we were in, not in the will of God, but we were in the will of the enemy. And we reminisce about those and we have, we have good time. We laugh and we joke about those times. But listen, God has already rejected that situation. God has already rejected the enemies. As a matter of fact, God already defeated the enemy at Calvary over 2,000 years ago. Yet we go back and we talk about all those things that used to happen. Listen, when I was, when I used to be, when I did these things. And, and we talk about those things as, as if we have an endearing to it, an endearing heart to those things. But people of God, just like the Lord is saying to Samuel, why are you mourning over Saul when I've already rejected him? Why are you mourning over the things that you used to do when I already rejected those things? Why are you already always allowing somebody to pull you back into the old when I already rejected that stuff? Why don't you leave, go into the new, which I'm trying to call you into? Because I understand that leadership transition, it can be uh, difficult. Leadership can transition, can make you fearful. I recognize sometimes that when we go through transitions in leadership, and then you think about not only something that happens maybe on your job, and yes, it's Gene, you thought you was having a good time, but my God, don't you know, my God, that the enemy was just, oh yeah, he was trying to show you a good time, but it was just a mirage. Yeah, he was just, my God, doing some things and trying to show you some things that, that he could lead you astray. He was just trying to, mm -hmm, he was just trying to get you to a place where he could, where he would get you under his clutches and get you so uh, steeped into his will that you would not want to go to the father who was trying to get you to a place of, of victory, get you to a place, my God, of healing and get you to a place of prosperity. But I'm telling you this morning, glory to God, that the Lord is saying that even though he understands that maybe my God, you, you're, you're, you're having some apprehension about the new leadership, but the new leadership is where the Lord needs for you to go. What he says is you go, glory to God. I got some strategy for you in order to bring this new leadership to pass. Glory to God. He said, but what you got to do is you got to depend on my word and listen to what I'm saying. Because sometimes people of God, listen, if we don't, if we don't adhere to the words of God, if we don't lean on God's everlasting arm, we're liable to go back to the old leadership where the Lord is pulling us out of that situation. He's pulling us out. He said to to Samuel. He said, invite Jesse to the sacrifice. He says, he says, I'm going to show you what to do. Even though you may be fearful, you may be fearful to go into a place. You may be fearful to walk into different situations. He said, but listen, I'm not giving you that spirit of fear. He said, that didn't come from me. He said, I gave you power. I gave you love and I gave you a sound mind. And so even though there may be situations where there's new leadership coming on, I, I, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, we have many different uh, leadership transitions happening, even in our own city. And you can think about it in the cities that you are in. Even leadership transitions in high places, governmental leadership transitions. And we don't know what's to do. We don't know what's going on. But I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, as long as we we obey the Lord's instruction. We will be successful in all things. Obey the Lord's instruction. That's what you got to do, people of God. Sometimes uh, because we're adults, we feel like we don't have to listen to anybody. Because we're 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 years old, we feel like we don't have to listen to what people are saying to us. But this morning, I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, if you don't listen to anybody else, you've got to listen to the Spirit of God speaking to you. Because my my God, listen, we got to know that God is making a decision and he's making a choice for you because glory to God, you already have walked in the will and in the way of the enemy. You already, my God, have walked down that path of destruction. You already, listen, the Bible says that man no, uh, thinks a way, but that way that man thinks is a way that leads to destruction. He thinks that way is right. 
Glory to God. But that way, my God, always leads to destruction. Glory to God. You got to know, my God, that your ways are not the ways of God. Because the Bible says his ways are higher than your ways and his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And, and so we've got to trust the wisdom of God because we can't trust our own wisdom. We got to look to God for where it is that God wants to lead us and where God wants to bring us to. Glory to God. And as we are looking at this passage of scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 16, how we see my God, that the Lord says, I've rejected Saul, but I got somebody else in place. I've set somebody else, my God, that can be the leader. I've set somebody else in place who has a heart for the people of God. I've set somebody else, my God, who is a mighty warrior. I've got somebody else who's prepared, my God, to lead the people through the situations that's going to occur, surely going to occur in their lives, my God. I've got somebody else in place, my God, who can counsel and who can lead. I've got somebody else, my God, in place who surely ready to do what it is that I've called for them to do. I've got somebody else in place, glory to God, who has the heart of God. What is it, my God? Who are you being led by? Now, nah, my God, thank you, Holy Spirit. Sometimes we are being led and we're looking up to people, my God, who do not have the heart of God. Yeah, you're looking up to people here on this earth who do not have, my God, the, 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 the seasoned look, the seasoned wisdom that God wants for them to have. And the Lord says, saying to you, you've got to, Lord, oh, yeah, I know, I know what you're doing. You're just like in when you heard, you know the story, just like when Samuel went to anoint glory to God, Jesse's son, David, he went and he saw all the other sons and, and he said, surely this one is it. Y'all, y'all know the one. Surely this older one is the one. Surely he is the one. But you know, the Bible said that, that man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And so we can't be. Sometimes we are too quick to choose who it is that we need to follow, who it is that we need to follow for our leadership, for our next leader. And sometimes we are following those who look great on the outside. Oh, yeah, they're made up. Yeah, their hair is nice. They're wearing something nice. They smell good. They're carrying a nice briefcase. Glory to God. But their heart, come on, is rotten. Their heart is not to God. Their heart is not for people. Their heart is not full of compassion. And their heart is surely not full of love love the way that God wants for us to love. And so we understand, my God, because of that, because we can't see the heart, we can't see the man of the heart of man, we can only see the outward appearance. We need a process that has the counsel of God included in it. We've got to say, God, who is it, my God, that I should be looking up to for that mentoring process? Who is it, God, that I should be looking up to, Lord God, to help me to get myself to the place where you want for me to be, not where I want want to be, God, but where you want me to be, because God, I know a way that the Bible says, yeah, man plans his way, but God orders his steps. I know a way, Lord God, but I want to go the way that you want me to go. And sometimes, and too often people of God, we want to go the way that we want to go. We won't, don't want to include God. And, and maybe my God, we go the way that we want to go. And then we ask God to come in on the back end. No, we don't want God to come in on our will. We want to come in on the will of God. God, whatever is your will, Lord God, allow us to do that situation. We talk about leadership, glory to God. We look at the qualities and the qualifications of leadership. Who are you following? Who are you looking up to, glory to God? And I know, my God, as God has already said, we've got to get away from the things of the enemy, get away from the evil things, get away from the backbiting, get away, my God, from the talking about one another, get away from the lying and get away from the cheating and get away from the stealing, my God. Get away, my God, from the envious heart. Get Get away from the characteristics that are not like God. What am I saying? Get away from the enemies in your life that are trying to destroy you and trying to bring you down and trying to, oh my God, try to hook you up. Come on, you got to seek the wisdom of God. Seek the kindness of God. Seek God, my God, for his leadership in your life. That God will lead you step by step to the place that he would have for you to go. Listen, when Samuel went, my God, to anoint, anoint Jesse's son as king, he didn't know which one it was, glory to God, because he looked at the outward appearance. And one by one, what happened? Y'all know it. He looked at, well, listen, he re there was rejected one by one. The Lord was saying, no, not him. He may look like he's the one, but not him. People of God, many of us look like the one that, oh yeah, we look, we look like it. We look like it on the outside, but what's going on on the inside? Oh yeah, we see you outside. We see what happens when you're at church on Sunday. 
Sunday mornings. But what are you doing when you get back home? What are you doing, my God? Yes, when you get a little attitude, when you're on the street driving your car, what happens? Glory to God, when you're in the grocery store, my God, and somebody speaks to you, what happens? Glory to God, what's going on on the inside of you that we can't see? What's happening, my God, when nobody is looking and nobody is watching? What, my God, are you showing that makes you, makes you the one? Hey, God, can God choose you? Will God anoint you as the leader in this hour and as the leader today? Oh, yeah, I switched on you right now. Yeah, what are you the one, my God? Yeah, I know you look good on the outside, and I know, my God, yeah, you brushed your teeth and you cleaned up this morning, but we got to be people of God that God will choose. Will God choose you? Oh, yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, that is the goal that we're trying to get to this morning, that God will choose you. And even in that, y'all know what happened in the story. Even in that, Samuel was saying there's got to be somebody else because the oil is not flowing, people of God. Will, oh yeah, that maybe I should have titled it, Will the Oil Flow? Will the oil flow, my God, when it pours on you? Will the oil flow? Because I'm telling you this morning, I don't know, glory to God, I don't know what's going on I don't in your life. I don't know what happens. I don't follow your home. Oh, I don't follow your home to see if you're cussing out your children or, or talking about your husband. I don't follow your home, my God, when you're backbiting against your sister or your brother. I don't follow your home, my God, to see if you cheated, my God. I don't follow your home, my God, to see how envious you are against your neighbor. I don't follow your home, glory to God. But I want you to know this morning that the Lord is looking for somebody that he can anoint with oil. He is looking for somebody, glory to God, that he can give the task of leadership to. He's looking for somebody, glory to God, yes, that will be the clear choice. I said the clear choice. When, my God, the oil is poured, will the oil pour on you? Will the oil pour on you? Yeah, I switched on you right now because we were talking talking about leadership. Who will you follow? But I want to know this morning, can somebody follow you? Will you be empowered by the spirit of God as the oil is poured on you? Glory to God. David came, you know, he was David. David was the Lord's clear choice. Come on and hear somebody. He was the Lord's clear choice. He was the Lord's clear choice because my God, when Samuel poured the oil, I want you to know this morning that the oil flowed. Oh yeah, the oil flowed. Will my God, the oil flow when it is poured on you. Yes, there is a, something about leadership transition and something about it, but I want you to know that when the oil is poured, glory to God, the Lord is saying, I want to develop you. I want you to develop you into the man or the woman of God that I've called for you to be. Now, I want you to develop you, God. He said that there is some training that you got to go through. There is some necessary training that you must have. Even as David was anointed king, I know the Bible lets us know that David went back to tending the sheep. But as David was tending the sheep, don't you understand that David was going through that training? David didn't look at himself as I'm this big bad king. David says, I got to go through some training. I've got to understand how I've got to take care of the sheep. And I got to understand, my God, how I got to protect the sheep. And I got to understand, my God, yes, how I got to see to the needs of the sheep. He says that if I can see to the needs of the sheep, if I can take care of them, I can protect them from the bear, my God. Yes, if I can protect them, my God, from the lion, if, if I can fight for them. Come on in here, somebody. If I can fight for the little sheep, maybe, my God, God will give me that responsibility to be able to fight for the people of God, to be able to take care of the people of God, to be able to protect the people of God. I, I can hear my God David saying, if I, don't, if I don't despise the small things, leader, come on in here, somebody. Sometimes, oh, I got to go here people of God. Sometimes we want to be the big leader. Oh, glory to God. We want to be the big leader in the church. We want to be the big leader in our community, in our neighborhoods, but we don't want to go through the process that it takes. Oh, y'all flipped on you. We don't want to go through the process that it takes to be the big leader. My God, we don't want to put the water out for the man and the woman of God. We don't want to pick up the paper that is on the floor. We don't want to go through the training that is necessary. Glory to God. We don't want to start the relationships that it takes in order for us to be the trained leader that man, that God wants for us to be. We don't want to, my God, have the relationship, first of all, that God, with God that it takes. You've got to commune with God. You've got to get the wisdom, my God, that is necessary from God. You can't, my God, listen, sometimes you've got to unlearn in order for God to pour into you and teach us what it is that we need to know. But sometimes we don't want to be the usher on the door. We don't want to greet the people 
as they are coming in. Yo, no, we want to be greeted, but we don't want to be the one to greet. But yet, my God, we want to be the leader. But there is a process, people of God. Oh, yeah, will the oil, yeah, I need to change my title to will the oil flow. Talking about leadership transition. And sometimes we wonder, my God, when we are put in leadership and prematurely, we wonder why the people will not accept us into leadership is simply because we've not gone through the necessary training or the process in order for us to be accepted into leadership because perhaps God has not been ready for readied us to be into leadership in here somebody listen Samuel he could not anoint the other brothers because God wasn't ready for those brothers he didn't want those brothers to be the king he wanted David to be the king he wanted the one my God who was humble he wanted the one my God who was full of love full of compassion he wanted the one who was trainable and teachable he wanted the one my God yes with that spirit who knew that I had to protect even these little ones I didn't despise the little things I can hear David saying I'm taking care of what I got to take care of in my father's house glory to God I can see him saying oh my God if you're faithful over a little bit if you're faithful over a few things I will make you ruler over many things I can hear David saying I accept the assignment God I accept the assignment of being faithful here my God until it's time for you to move me to another place come on and hear somebody we've got to be oh glad God acceptance of what it is that God wants us to do we've got to be acceptance of training we've got to be acceptance my God of the relationships that we've got to have glory to God in order for God to move us to another place of leadership where the people of God will accept us into leadership and where my God we will be effective in doing the things that God has called for us to do oh there is a changing of the guards people of God not only a changing of the guards from us leaving a place my God of the enemy and going to a place where the Lord will have for us to be but there's also a changing of the guards my God among men and women where you will no longer my God be just the tail but you will be the head where you my God will be in leadership yourself but you got to know that you've got to go through the process oh if I was in church I would tell you to say process you've got to go through the process my God where the Lord is shifting you glory to God that you may do all that he's called for you to do go through the necessary training my God where God could train you where God could raise you up where God could do the things that he wants you to do my God where you will recognize the spirit of the Lord has to be upon you where you can recognize my God that you've got to be skillful in what it is that you do that you could not my God just get by glory to God we've got to stop trying to just get by people of God but we've got to be skillful my God skillful in our leading and skillful in our reading and skillful my God in our working and skillful my God in the things that God has put our hands to do skillful in our tasks and skillful in our abilities and skillful in our gifts my God how can we be skillful my God unless we practice that thing and oh my God how can we be skillful unless we do what it is that God glory to God has called for us to do my God listen to the word of God my God this is the Bible says Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said send me your son David who is with the sheep Jesse took the donkey loaded with a bread of skin and wine and young goat and sent them by the son David to Saul and David came and stood before him and loved him greatly and became his armor bearer he became his armor bearer and Saul said to Jesse please let David stand before me for he has found favor in my sight in my sight and it was so Whenever the spirit of God came from Saul, that David would take a harp and play it with his hand. And Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. David, a man after God's own heart, the oil flowed. Will the oil flow on you? Will it flow on you? Yes, the Lord wants to move you to leadership. He wants to move you to a place where you're working in the things of God. He wants to move you to a place where you're being more productive and more effective for him. Are you ready to allow the oil to flow in your life? Father God, we just bless your name, oh God. We praise you for who you are. We thank you, Lord God, that you're strong and mighty, oh God. And Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for this word of motivation that helps us to get up, God. First of all, God, to move God from a place, God, of, of despair, God, and despondency, Lord God. To move God from a place where the enemy has had us to a place where, Lord God, we accept you as our Lord and King and Savior, oh God. 
And then, God, to recognize that you don't want us just to sit, God, but you want us, oh, God, yes, to be productive, God, and mighty warriors in the kingdom of God. Lord, that you expect us, God, to use our gifts, our abilities, and our talents, oh, God, to do more for you, God. Lord, God, that when, God, it's time for you to anoint us as leaders, that the oil will flow. And, Lord, because of that, we recognize there's some things that we need to do. Clean our hearts up, oh, God, yes, that we will have more love, God, for one another, more compassion, oh, God, for one another. And Lord God, that we will certainly have got more understanding, God, for more than one another, Lord God. And if we don't have the wisdom that we need, Lord God, right now we ask for the wisdom, oh God, that you give us the wisdom that we need, oh Lord God, to lead the people of God in the way that they need to be led, oh God. God, let us not always be followers, God, but let us now, God, be leaders that you rec- that we recognize, oh God, that when it's time for you, God, to move us to a different place. Move us to a place, God, of a promotion, oh God, that we will accept that. And not only will we accept it, oh God, the people of God will accept us, God, as being promoted. God, accept us as being leaders in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, yes, that we don't, we, we don't always know, God, who it is that we need to follow. But we thank you, Lord God, that as we follow you, that your choice is always the right choice. And Lord God, this morning we ask, Lord God, that your choice, God, be our choice For us, oh Lord God, as you accept us and you choose us, oh God, for leadership, God, clean up our heart. Help us, God, to be more and more like you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, God, I pray for those that are sick among us. Pray that you'll lift lift them up from their beds of affliction, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you've already done with Sister Angela. For God, we know you're going to continue to heal her, Lord God. Heal her mind, God, her body, and her soul. God, give her the strength that she needs, oh God, to continue to do the work you've called her to do. And I pray for Sister Latanja's daughters. I pray for her granddaughters, oh God. I pray for the females in her life, oh God, in her space, oh God, that you will help them to know, God, they are powerful beyond measure, oh God, and they do not have to succumb to the tricks and the traps of the enemy. We come against the enemy right now. We rebuke that spirit that is trying to overtake them, oh God. We recognize, Lord God, that you are more, far more powerful than anything that's trying to overtake them in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Lord God, we bless you, oh God. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do, God, in this next, this day, God, to come. We give your name, praise and glory for it in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen and bless the Lord. People of God, this is the 4th of July. That means that's, that means that's freedom. This You are already free. Listen, we didn't have to get a date and say that we were free. We were freed over 2,000 years ago. And I recognize, my God, some people didn't get the news, but I got the news. Hey, I got the news that we were free. I got the news that we were free when the, when the Lord, on the third day morning, when the Lord got up, he rose with all power in his hand. Yes. And when he rose, the Bible says we rose to. Yeah, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. It's the same power that got up in you. It's in you, people of God. So we are free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. Hallelujah. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. I love you with the love of Jesus. You all have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful fourth. (laughs) Go in peace. We'll see you tomorrow.